Oh, yes. Wednesday have done it again. <laughs> we are here again on the Terrace Talk View. The bear is back. Great to see him. Um, with Matt and with Andrew. And this week, it's a tasty Yorkshire derby because Leeds are in town. Oh, we'll get our Leeds fan on in a second. Sorry, boys. Um, but first of all, we need to preview, uh, sorry, review the Rotherham game. Now, we're recording this before the midweek fixture. So, Matt, talk to us about the heroes from that game at, uh, uh, at Rotherham. Yeah, I think we started very, very front foot. We were very, very in your face and pressing, which was good to see. It's been a couple of weeks since we have gone back to, since we've seen really that type of a style. We saw it very much when Danny Roll first came in. I'm not saying we haven't pressed, but it was really evident within the first five five seconds or so of Rotherham winning the ball back that we would be right up and in their faces trying to win it and then drop back into more of a defensive shape um, and kind of sit. I think the stats also bared before the game that Rotherham don't fare particularly well against sides who do that and their handful of positive results that have come over the course of the season is sides who do let them go long early uh, and do sit off them we didn't give them a minute's piece um, and that was something that was really good to see from the off I think truth be told we could have been two or three up at half time we had one of the most bizarre disallowed goals you will ever see um, at EFL level um, I know the standard of officiating is discussed much on social media um, but uh, Akin Fumewo, who scores the goal, is five yards on side when the ball's played uh, and he wins the ball. The only thing that I can think is the official must think it's Michael Ahekwa who's headed the ball in. Um, and then, yeah, after that, second half, slightly different proposition. Rotherham huffed and puffed um, and were a better side and did start to get the ball further forward. In the first half, it was just literally going forward and coming back at them. Uh, changes, which... I'll be honest, in the stands on Saturday, I was left scratching my head a little bit thinking, I can't quite work out what he's going to do here. But that's exactly why I'm not a football manager. Dropping Ugbo back into that little 10 position to free him up. Gasama at times this, this season has been very much what you'd expect from a young pacey winger. Um, I think I've heard the phrase speedboat, no driver quite a lot. Um, made the right pass. Domai Orfa cuts it back. And that man again is there in EK Ugbo who tucks the ball away. After that, it was, again, a fairly routine sort of canter to the finish line. Um, Rotherham had a half-decent chance, which was bundled towards the goal line, and, and Barry Bannon clears it off. Uh, and, yeah, good day out at the uh, at the New York on Saturday. Um, thanks for that, Matt. Um, Andrew, um, you've talked about sticking the ball in the back of the net when it counts. This, uh, lots on this channel. And uh, clean sheets now as well. How important is that? Been? for you uh, going forward? It's all come together at the right time. As I said to you, we're having a terrific run now. Obviously, four wins now out of the last five games, which is tremendous. It's promotion form, not relegation form, as we know. But uh, no, Saturday was never any doubt. Never a worry. Again, at Rodgers, there was never any doubt against Bristol City. Same story. We were far more impressive against Rotherham and more in control against them than Ipswich were at home against them when they struggled to beat them 4-3 in the 98th minute. We we, we should have, the, the result actually was 2-0 Saturday. As Matt says, that goal was a definite header, definitely would have been allowed. If VAR existed in the championship, the goal would have stood. So 2-0 is the actual score. But fair enough, 1-0 is what's in the record books. But no, never a moment's doubt. Team played well all together from start to end. Uh, togetherness is the key word that Danny Roll's been saying, and we have got that now in abundance. Everyone's out there playing their hearts out for the club and Matt also makes a crucial clearance there by Barry Bannon to be on the line and stop them getting a very lucky freak equaliser if they'd have got that draw that would have been a total injustice for the, the way the game was played the amount of shots we had compared to them and we had what well four shots on target compared to their one shot on target the stat says but we were in control of that game never never a moment's doubt for me Okay uh, Matt how much is the defensive um strength largely down to 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 the goalkeeper and uh, the form is is currently in yeah i think he has shored up our defence from uh, and this is no slight on Cameron Dawson he's been a fantastic servant to the club um, he is a Wednesday fan through and through first and foremost and I was really pleased that he was the one who was in goal for the game last season at Wembley in the Peterborough game it was a must require improvement in the summer we didn't um, we struggled as a result at the start of the season 
um, since bringing James Beadle in. Um, I wouldn't say he had a shaky start. I would just say it was unflattering in terms of it was okay. There was nothing particularly spectacular. I don't think you can take that position lightly in terms of how much of an impact he has had um, on the team. The way in which that Danny Roll wishes to play is playing the ball out from the back like every other side in the championship. Uh, it appears other than Rotherham um, at the minute. He's so comfortable with the ball at his feet. Um, there are times when he will, rather than clip a ball long into a channel, he will hit it sort of head height and it always seems to find a player. It doesn't look particularly pretty. Um, I won't lie. It doesn't, it doesn't look particularly effective. on. It doesn't look particularly pretty on the eye, but it is really effective and he always finds his man. That has made a, a huge difference. I think a settled, up until this weekend, a relatively settled back three, five, however you want to call it, in front of him has made a huge difference as well. We had to make some changes at the weekend with um, Femewo coming in for um, Deshaun Bernard, who's been excellent. Ehekwa next to Femewo was the right call for me. Um, he made the right call in rather than bringing Bambo Diaby back in, who has been a car crash waiting to happen in many games this season. Um, was the right call and, it, and it's so proved um, clean sheet you cannot underestimate the impact that he's had um, he's currently now surpassed Cameron Dawson's clean sheet record obviously over the course of the season as well in such a short space of time you can understand why he's so highly rated by everybody at Brighton and, and, and those outside the club as well In fairness to Cameron Dawson what I would say there is that um, Beadle has had a stronger defence in front of him to help him to help that defence be sound. When Dawson had was playing goal, the, the defence in front of him wasn't as, as strong, wasn't as um, accurate in their the sort of marking. And uh, I, I feel that Dawson, if he'd been playing these games that Beadle's been playing in, I'm sure he'd have made the same saves. I, I've seen the shots have been going at him, and I'm fairly sure Dawson would have been conceding the goals. I, I think we're lucky. Wednesday are lucky. We're back to the days many years ago. We used to have Peter Springer, Peter Grummet, two fine goalkeepers in there together. We also had Chris Turner and Bob Boulder once. They were great goalkeepers playing together. We've now got two more. I don't want to lose Dawson either. I keep Obviously, Beadle's got to keep his place for the time being, but Dawson's got to be there knocking on the door waiting for his chance to come as well. Simple okay. as that. All right. All right, knocking on the door then this weekend. Uh, entering Hillsborough then is uh, Leeds. Bring um, in. <laughs> um, Matt, when the fixtures are released, is this the first home fixture you look for this year? Um, it's the one that I look at with the most trepidation, I'll be honest with you, especially considering how Leeds have gone this season. I was at Ellen Road earlier in the season, and honestly, if that somebody had told me that day that that finished 6-0, I wouldn't have been surprised. Um, <laughs> They are a, I mean, let's not beat around the bush here, rivalries aside, they're a fantastic side. Um, they've got a, a too much quality for this division. I think they've just been unfortunate the fact that there are Leicester themselves, Southampton and Ipswich, who have also been fantastic this season as well. Um, yeah, it is a game that I look forward to. I would suggest it's not, for myself personally, it's not the biggest game of the season um, in terms of, I, I would look at the teams who are around us. I think Stoke is our biggest game of the season this year. It just depends on league position. In terms of local pride, yes, I would suggest that this is more important for Sheffield Wednesday fans than Rotherham was. But then I would suggest on the flip side of that, it's probably more important as how Rotherham would see us. We would probably see ourselves in a similar position to Leeds as they have many more rivals as well it is a game that I am going into on Friday absolutely dreading um, and I know that is a lot of recent form my heart says a 1-1 draw my head says a 2-0 win to Leeds um, they are just a very a, a very very strong side at this point in time uh, and similar to Leicester um, in terms of the strength of it um, so yeah all right, Steve uh, this was a foregone conclusion uh, two months ago um, do you still think this is going to be as uh, straightforward as uh, as most Leeds fans would have thought? No. Um, I think the guys have just been talking about it there. I think um, they're on some really, really good form at the moment. They're, they're picking up a lot of confidence. But um, it is Leeds against Sheffield Wednesday. And, um, you know, based on the Huddersfield result, we need to be going into that game on Friday, not playing the occasion and playing the actual match, I think. Eight o'clock, the fans, Sheffield Wednesday fans will be making that a raucous place. It'll be a really good atmosphere to be a part of. But we do really need to to show our quality. It, it's quite clear at the top of this division, just even, you know, one draw and we've we've dropped to third. So we have to be going in on Friday and, and really trying to 
turn the screw, but I don't see it being a, a walkover whatsoever. It is going to be a difficult, tight game, but hopefully we can make that extra quality count. Okay. Um, Leeds Andrew- haven't scored against us in our last three meetings. Just set the record straight to Matt said 2 0 to Leeds, not a chance. Leeds haven't scored more than one goal against us in any match since 2016. And it's not happening on Friday night, I can assure you. Not more than one goal. I was just about to say, Andrew, I'm really excited to cut to five past eight on Friday. <laughs> you wait. <laughs> you wait. You see what happens this Friday. I'm very confident. Oh my goodness. I'm very, especially after Huddersfield's result. I wouldn't have been so confident if Leeds had, had sorted out Huddersfield, but that match has given me a lot of confidence. Danny Rolls got us buzzing. Okay. Let's get some score predictions then. Matt, we've already heard yours. Andrew? Well, obviously, again, you know, we haven't talked about this match before or the, the other match has been played, of course. I was on Green TV yesterday talking about the Plymouth match. And I'm going for a home win there, of course, but it's not going to be easy. because. But the crucial win that we get to within two points of Plymouth, this is our chance. This is our week. We do Plymouth, and if we manage to beat Leeds on Friday night and Birmingham and Stoke st- suffer in their two away matches, we're out of the bottom three next Saturday. And that's what <laughs> I want to see. And you may laugh, but it believe, and it can happen. So I'm going to take... Yet again, with him here, a 2-1 win for Wednesday. 2-1, every time I'm saying 2-1, we've been winning. I don't care what the score is, but I'll say 2-1 to Wednesday. Come on. If you you beat Wednesday at Leeds this weekend, I'll bring my own teddy bear next week and show you. Bring him in. Bring him on. Bring him in. I cannot cannot see Wednesday beating Leeds. I'm sorry. I mean, I'll I'll back you every week. All right. All right. Steve? Yeah, I, honestly, I do think it'll be a tight game. I'm not really too bothered about stats since 2016 with, <laughs> um, with some of the players that we've got. But I know I do think it's going to be a really tight game. So I'm going to, I'd pick up, I'd take a 1 0 win right now. Not because I think we should be scared of Sheffield Wednesday or anything like that. I just think the game Friday night, the, the Yorkshire Derby, um, it's going to be a tight affair. So yeah, I, I'll go 1 0 lead. All right, nice one. Thank you very much, fellas. Uh, Matt, just quickly give us your uh, player of the month for February. Uh, I, I don't think there can really be anybody else. He's not been my favourite, but it's got to be EK Ugbo. My favourite has been Jan Pavada. Okay. Hey, Andrew? Well, he's mentioned those two players, but I'm not going for either of them, actually. I'm going for the unsung hero of mine for the last month, and that is the stalwart that he is, Barry Bannon. He made that clearance off the line Saturday, which saved us from a... a, a Dropping points there would have been a draw. He's created goals for us. He's been a tireless worker the whole month and, and he's been the engine that's been driving the team. So it's easy to pick Ugbo here. Six goals, great. But I'm saying, saying Barry Bannon. Okay. Right. Thank you very much. Good luck, Leeds. So we'd have to look at that bear next week. We'll see you all in a time. <laughs> okay. Cheers. Cheers.